Assemble! Stay dandy, baby. So I don't think that anybody told Rachel that there's already a main protagonist of the show. I mean, it's something that she's going to have to get over clearly, but this episode of Tower of God, the final episode of the first season, reaffirms all of us that Rachel is a total bitch. What a bitch. Hello my friends and welcome to another review of Tower of God, and this is a pretty monumental episode as it's the final episode of the first season of the show, and man, what a finale it was. It wasn't exactly an action-packed romp like the last couple of episodes, but it did let us know, the viewer, that Rachel is someone who is not to be trusted. It is also worth mentioning that this episode does tease the fact that there is going to be more Tower of God in the future, but they have not made an official announcement for a second season. But considering how popular the show is and how amazing this season was, I feel it's inevitable that we're going to get another season of Tower of God. Either that or this is just an extended commercial to go read the freaking webtoon. But before we jump into this episode and all of its juicy details, I just want to thank all of you again for continuing to check out these reviews. They have been very successful on my channel. I absolutely love the comments and the likes and all of the activity that's been going on with these reviews and these videos. So thank you guys so much for checking that out. Just a reminder, if you guys are liking these videos, please give them a like, a thumbs up. It really helps out the videos a lot. And and consider checking out some of my other anime reviews. I'm looking at a number of other different shows right now, some of which are going to be returning after some of the hiatuses that they've been on, not to mention the summer 2020 anime season is about to drop on us, and I'd love to get your recommendations for what shows you guys would like me to look at. If I have the time, I will definitely check them out. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the final episode of the first season, of Tower of God. So this episode was more of a deep dive into Rachel and who she is as a character and why she's gone out of her way to completely screw over Bam in this massive test to climb the tower. And really it all comes down to the fact that Rachel herself simply wants to be the main character. She wants to be the hero. She wants the glory, she wants the friends, and she wants to see the stars. Or as Hadon says, she wants to be the star herself. Now as for what's actually driving this motivation behind Rachel aside from the fact that she's just completely obsessed with her very own self, it's kind of hard to say. While it is easy to immediately hate Rachel for all of the things that she's done, and trust me, I'm not justifying any of the actions that she's actually done, especially when it comes to pushing Bam out of the frickin' bubble and sending him to a dark abyss, but there's definitely got to be a little bit more to this character than meets the eye. She's a very troubled and very scary character who initially tried to climb the tower herself where she actually met Hadon just like Bam. And she went through the whole thing where she had to go through the big eel test and try and destroy the ball. Of course, she couldn't do it. She's incredibly weak and she is just desperate to climb this tower. That's when Hadon gives her the proposal of allowing Bam to essentially become her savior, as he says. It's actually going to be Bam who's going to allow her to end up climbing this tower. Now, here's where things get a little disturbing and a little freaking crazy. So, Hadon's entire plan here is that he's going to allow Rachel to have the ability to climb the tower if she can kill Bam. Now, of course, at first, this seems like something that could be very easy for her, but again, there's something in her personality that's been keeping her from actually doing this just outright. I mean, any time, she could have just gone up to Bam and slit his throat, shot him in the head, but no, she avoids it at every single cost and eventually waits for the right moment to do it, so one, she can't get caught in the process, and two, because she's waiting for that perfect moment, and that all comes in the final test here, where she does eventually stand up and pushes him, and no one actually ends up seeing what happens, although I have my doubts about some of these characters. Uh, you know, when you look at the character of Kuhn, who's a very very smart and calculating character. I have a feeling he understands what's truly going on with Rachel here. But again, there's a little bit more to this conspiracy aside from the fact that she's been led on by a weird creepy rabbit demon. No, it also looks like Han Song Yu has also been a part of all of this as well as that red-headed girl. It's actually officially confirmed in this episode that that girl is the one who actually gave that note to Ho. She was the one that actually got Rachel involved in this entire situation and even thought that this would be the perfect opportunity for her to get closer to Bam. 
you see Haydon, Han Sung Yu, this red-headed woman. They've all been a part of, like, this weird conspiracy to try and get Bam essentially sort of, like, out of the picture. Or at least that's the way that it actually seems initially. I have a feeling that they're actually trying to draw out Rachel a little bit, but also... There's something interesting about Bam. The fact that that red-headed woman was involved with all of this, and yet by the end of the episode, it is confirmed that yes, he is indeed alive, and that she's actually going to help him get strong again so that he can climb the tower. And I gotta say, this series completely subverted my expectations with the fact that I thought the entire show was basically gonna be all about Bam with his brand new friends climbing the tower and going on crazy adventures. It's actually going in a completely different direction where it looks like he's actually going to be doing all of this by himself while all the other characters go off on their very own separate adventures. I have a feeling he is going to reunite with them eventually, but the end of the episode indicates that that might not be that soon. Oh, and one other detail that I missed. Remember that one big scary motherfucker? The guy who was essentially Rachel's bodyguard along with it in Dorsey? Apparently he is directly connected to Rachel. He's some sort of being that's sort of connected to her in a sense. At least that's what Haydon is actually explaining in this episode. And the whole scene where Ho actually ended up stabbing Rachel, it actually ended up sort of like killing him in the process, or at least that's the way that I'm actually viewing it. In a way, he was sort of like a substitution for all of the damage that she was going to take, which explains why he reacts when she gets stabs and when he, you know, just sort of suddenly disappears out of nowhere. Either that or some other weird crazy Shinsu shit going on in this episode. It's really freaking weird. So the episode ends with a number of crazy things happening. All the other people pass the test and they get ready to climb the tower. And of course, Rachel is going to be joining them with a lot of these characters wanting to actually help her out in honor of helping Bam, not realizing that Rachel is a total bitch and a half. On top of that, you have Lara Rowe who realizes that there's been some weird shit going on in this entire competition. And he decides that he's going to try and find the truth himself, actually leaving his position and even deciding that he's going to climb the tower to try and discover some of the mysteries of what's truly going on here and then we have Bam who officially decides that he is going to find the answers himself by climbing the tower apparently he's going to be trained by that red-haired girl and I think in the final shot of the episode we get a time skip scene where we get to see a much older Bam with longer hair who had just got done killing a monster and maybe this is him in the future maybe it's a separate character altogether from the webtoon that I have no idea who they are and the people who read it are probably freaking out but I'm guessing that this is actually an older version of Bam, maybe just, you know, a little taller, more muscular, and more prepared for the epic journey that he's about to go on. All I know is, this is just the beginning of Tower of God. A lot of my commenters have been saying that this first season is essentially just the prologue, and it was one hell of a prologue to say the least. So, what's the rundown on this episode of Tower of God. What a fantastic way to end this season, and it has got me so pumped up for the future of the series. And what's interesting is that this is an episode which mostly focused on the character of Rachel, but I'm really glad it did, because after the last episode, I think we were all in shock with seeing what she actually did. There was always something kind of strange about her character, the fact that she got involved in this competition and teaming up with all these weird people, a princess of Jihad, a giant freaking monster man, and killing all these people. It's, it's always been mysterious ever since she decided to come back in the series and it's made it so that she's been kind of hard to read. I just had a feeling that she had some sort of other ulterior motive and didn't want to get Bam involved but really she just wants everything that Bam has. Everything that he's attained, his friendships, uh, just the fact that he's going to have the ability to climb the tower and it, it makes her come across as this very scary and selfish character and it's made me completely change my view of her altogether and it pretty much makes me realize that I'm never going to trust her again. Like, if she ever comes back and tries to start some sort of relationship with Bam, I'm going to immediately be apprehensive and I'm not going to trust anything that she's going to do. And I really hope that Bam is going to learn from this. I, I really hope that if he does reunite with her, if they have another confrontation, he's not going to see her as this almighty goddess who saved him from a slow early death as a child. Like, I really want him to learn from these experiences and become someone different. And that's really what I think this entire prologue is all about, is showing who this character was and who eventually they're going to become. And that's what's got me really excited. Not to mention, there's just so much more to see in this world. I mean, the, the entire premise of the show is climbing this tower, and we haven't even started it yet. This is all just like sort of the start to actually getting to that, so I really hope it's going to pay off at some point in the future. 
Production value-wise, this was another good episode. Um, it is worth mentioning that most of it is done in flashbacks, and there's only a few small new scenes, but the ones that are there are incredibly important, and it's not like a grandiose, like, super action-packed episode. That's not what it's meant to be. It's meant to wrap up this prologue, which is going to lead to an even bigger story, and in that sense, it did a pretty good job. And it was the perfect kind of episode to end the season after all the craziness from the last two. So I really liked it. And again, just like the rest of the season production value-wise, it looks really clean and consistent all the way through. The character design is really distinctive. The line work, the animation, the colors. At the end of the day, Tower of God is a full package anime. It works in pretty much everything that it's trying to do and quite competently. It's pretty easy to see why it's one of the most popular anime of the seasons for its creativity, its great characters, and the amazing world that it's presenting. I myself cannot wait to see more of Tower of God. Now, as I've said previously in my other reviews, I am not going to read the webtoon. I'm going to wait to see if there's going to be an announcement for the anime, and if it's coming out, I'm going to watch that. I love being surprised with every single episode and learning a little bit more about the show. A lot of my commenters have said some things have changed from the webtoon, but again, I'm looking at the anime version. I can't compare it to the webtoon, something that I've never seen before. I have to judge the series on its very own merits. And so far, Tower of God, the anime series, is definitely worth your time if you're looking for a great adventure show. So yeah, I loved this episode. I loved the entire season. I'm giving this episode a 5 out of 5, and I would have to say that this is a really strong season of anime. I don't want to say it's completely perfect, but as far as entertainment value goes and watching it every week and discussing it with all of you guys, this was a 5 out of 5 experience for me, so I think that's what I'm going to have to give the entire season. It was just consistently entertaining and done so well throughout that I just I have to award it for that. So yeah, there it is. Great episode. I'd love to get your thoughts about this one, the final episode of Season 1, and your hopes for the potential of a second season. What were your favorite moments from Season 1 of Tower of God, your favorite characters, uh, your favorite cliffhanger endings, favorite fight scenes, all your favorite moments from Tower of God? Let's discuss all of those in the comment section below, and of course, what your hopes are for the future of the franchise. So there it is, my friends. Thank you for watching this video. Like I said earlier, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. If you guys are going to go the extra mile, you want to support this channel a little bit more, please, I implore you to check out my Patreon in the description box below. Your donations not only help make the content on this channel better, but you make it look better in terms of production value and sound and all that stuff. Not to mention, of course, I'll do an anime series review of your choice. So make sure to please help support us. We would really appreciate that. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching these reviews. I'll see you all next time. And as always, stay dandy, baby.